So whenever I join a new company, I treat it like a game. Like maybe that's not a great way of framing this to any new companies. That <laughs> I like it. Wait, it makes them. it more fun. <laughs> but so like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like this is a journey you're going on. So I think of it as like a metaverse game. I understand lots of industry benchmarks. I know what good retention looks like. I know what a good activation rates look like. I know what a good conversion rate from sign up to search to add to cart looks like for e-commerce as an expert across these different industries. That's kind of the template heuristic map that I'm inheriting when I enter a new company, which is my new metaverse. And it's been collected over many different metaverses that I've walked through and experienced. But when I enter a new universe, I should be aware that not everything will be the same, right? Some things will be similar, but not exactly the same. Every business has its own unique differentiators or things that they invest in. It's why you have so many competitors in the same industry because everyone has something unique to them. You have to figure out what that thing is. And so when you look at this fog of war in a game, if you've spent many hours in like Warcraft, civilization Dota, is my is the one be. that yeah yeah that's the one that comes into my brain yeah. absolutely yeah. like you know that this map is blacked out until you start to explore so the first thing i do in a company when i join is i just explore i spend the first three months exploring if i'm working full-time i'll spend three weeks if i'm just advising three weeks of like going through every broad spectrum of metric and team I think the organizational chart is a really good way of mapping my fog of war to start with, just seeing like, what do all these teams care about? What metrics are they looking at? What do they, these things look like? And you start to identify kind of these hot spots, but you don't get stuck anywhere, right? You don't want to get stuck in the map because you don't know where all of the threats are yet. So you keep exploring the map and you know how that map kind of turns that subtle like gray when you've left it for too long, like the metrics are no longer visible to you. <laughs> They could be changing. There could be enemies and new threats or risks popping up there that you wouldn't know about. You're gonna have to go revisit that later. But now that you kind of defined your map, you know what all of the main like city squares are, you know the boundaries perhaps of like where your enemy territory is, you can start to kind of plot your strategy knowing these new pieces of information and updating your own internal heuristics of what this company's operations and metrics look like and what leading indicators you should start with. So like maybe you found enemy territory that's woefully undermanaged. They're not breaching the walls of their civilization at all yet. You think this is an area that you can tap into for quick wins, go there first. And that would be something to come back around to now that you've plotted this map and you understand the size of each opportunity. And I think of like every experiment as an additional kind of like way of clearing that fog. Now that you've run this experiment, you know whether or not your two weeks of sprint time spent on improving the search feature, whether or not that improved activation rates significantly or insignificantly. And there are multiple explore exploit strategies that you can use here. One that I like to use is like the win, stay, lose, switch strategy, which is if you win, if you run this experiment, you fix the search to have fuzzy search or to search across better metadata to return better results to your customers, then great, that was a win. Like, is this the best conversion rates you've had on activation, the best lift in improvement? Is it statistically significant and also meaningfully significant in terms of impact? Then great, like maybe you keep playing in this space because you know it's a winning strategy. And at some point, that third or fourth iteration, you're no longer getting the same returns that you were in the beginning, that's kind of the lose situation. Maybe you want to switch to something else. You want to start exploring again. That's one framework I like to use in the early days of a product. I think that's a really cool way of looking at it. My question for you, Crystal, is the map is infinite and basically impossible to fully explore up front. How do you use experience to sort of like figure out the map? What are the rough areas of the map that they should explore before they dive in and start, you know, killing rats in one corner of the map, so to speak? That is a very good question. So I always start with retention and just work my way backwards, essentially. Mm -hmm. So if retention's not great, there's a problem there. Got it. But then I will start creating almost like these divergent paths, the same way that you would in a metaverse, you have like these split universes that you can go into. Mm -hmm. So there's the universe of like, okay, well, retention is not great, but it's great for some people. And then it's not great for these other people, but the people it is great for 
what is their experience like? And I will go down that rabbit hole narrative, almost like a create your own story narrative mm -hmm. of like, let's follow this user journey. I'll literally sample logs. I'll sample logs from the users who are churning. And then I'll look at the activation funnel. And this is one step before your kind of aha moment retention funnel. And so I'm piecing together the user journey to start out with. And then I'll zoom back out and say, okay, given the business model is this way, do these things make sense? Where is the room for the most like, meat to come out of this product? Like, are we over monetizing too early? Are we not monetizing enough? What are these users trying to do? And what is our business model goal? Is it aligned with what I'm seeing in these metrics? I will then look at specific features that I think are in the way of that aha moment. 